So our inputs have been automatically um, carried across into our sheet C sharp file, which is great. And to start off, we just need to give some instructions for how the um, information will be sort of processed. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a string called final string. And the first thing we want to do is just make that, or well, the initial action is to make that equal to the starting string, which um, is this value here, x. Um, every time we finish a line of code, we just signify that by using the semicolon, and then you can hit enter and move on to the next one. So next we want a final string to be equal to the grow string. Um, the grow string is the name of the um, the function that we're going to use to yeah do what we say grow grow the string. So um, that just has to hold some uh, variables which are as follows. So every time grow string runs, it's going to um, process these and close that off. And the last thing we need to do um, is just make our growth code, which is essentially our kind of output container here. We just want to say that that's equal to the final string. And close that off. So with that done, we can um, start on the, the script and we're gonna make that um, grow string that I just mentioned. And here we just need to, um, kind of similar to the, the Rhino component, component, we need to specify what these variables are. So we've got um, number as an integer and the rest is string. Oops, just be careful with the caps. Okay, that looks good. So now we can use some, uh, we use these curly brackets and everything inside of these will be uh, what we use to generate the grow string. And we're also going to, just before we start that bit, we're going to give a direction for, at the end of this code, um, you know, what, what do we want to do with it? So we're going to use return to call that information and it's going to just become final string. And close that off. Cool, so yeah, the first bit we need to do is create kind of like a container. Um, we're going to be adding iteratively um, characters to our string. So we need a place for that to go. Um, so that's gonna be called new string. And the way we say that that's going to be empty is just with um, open quotation or empty quotation marks. Close that off. Next thing we need is a character variable. Um, this is basically just um, a rule for saying within our string that we create, um, we'd like to pull out a certain, you know, piece of information. So that might be like A, B, C, D. Um, and within within lists in, in coding, most languages start um, the first piece of information is equal to zero. So a would be zero, B would be one, C would be two, and D would be three. So we could say, you know, um, within this rule, can we pull out um, the second uh, item? And that would be B. So that might not make heaps of sense now, but we're going to use that in a, in a moment. So for now, we can just close that off. And we're going to create what's called a for loop. So this is kind of the main 
um, driver, if you like. A for loop is kind of like a little engine within the script, um, and we might provide it. It's like a test condition. We might provide it with a list um, of information and ask for, you know, in, in our case, we're using a string and we want to, uh, we might say like, yeah, return the fourth letter in this um, line of letters or how many letters are in this um, string. So for that, it needs a few pieces of information. Um, it needs the starting point, which will be integer and i. So i is just a kind of an, a placeholder, which is commonly used in for loops. It doesn't actually mean anything. It's just sort of saying that we're starting at position and then we're going to set zero. Close that off. And then the, the place we need it to finish is um, when i is less than or equal to the num integer. So we can say i less than or equal to num. And if you remember, num is just this slider that we've assigned. So if it's set to four, our for loop's going to run through iteratively one, two, three, four times um, until it hits that. And the final piece uh, that this for loop needs is within this uh, command, how many times will it, um, oh, sorry, how many jump, how many lines of code will it jump each time? And we just want to go one by one. So we can, we can we're just going to say I plus and plus, which means, um, yeah, one by one. Cool. So again, we're going to use the open curly brackets and we're actually going to jump in and nest a second for loop. So similar setup, but this time we're going to use the variable j um, just because i is already taken, obviously. And we're starting at zero again. Um, but this time we want j to run for the length of um, our final string. So to get that piece of information, we just use j is less than Final string, and then if we use a full stop and length, it's telling it the full length of the final string. Final string. Close that, and again, we're jumping through our loops um, one at a time. Okay, so within within this um, this test, we can give some instructions for how we want it to what we want it to do with that information. So here we can use our rule char that we created before to call um, that variable j from final string, um, which yeah, to do that, we just, we just place j within uh, square brackets after final string. And then every time uh, we run through this length of string, uh, the, this string in its full length, we want to search for our characters um, from our rules. So the, we've got f um, and x. And we'll, we'll just start off with those because they are a little bit easier. So we can say if our rule char oops um, so when we use it we're, we're just saying it's going to be equal to x and if we're referencing a term that we've set up within the code then uh, we need to just use double equals um, so yeah, every time uh, we hit the letter X, we want to say curly bracket and our new string container will hold the original condition of new string plus 
our rule x. Again, um, so every time we hit x, it's going to drop this entire piece of code back in. Um, and this is kind of called like a recursion. So it's like a really powerful way to kind of build our branches of our uh, system. And we can close that off. And we want to do the same for the F character as well. So we can actually just copy and paste that. Type in F and that bit's finished. So our other characters are to do with the position um, and the direction of our total graphics, if you remember. So we've got plus and minus, and also these open and close brackets. So we start off with an if rule. So if our character is equal to an open square bracket, and then we can use a straight line to, to say or. So this is going to be our little block. And we're just going to copy and paste this a few times. Make sure they're spaced out. So if it's equal to an open bracket or a closed bracket or a minus or a plus, Then we want our new string to equal the original condition of new string. Plus our rule character. So again, if, if, if we hit this, um, any one of these characters, we're just making sure it's replaced in the, in the um, next iteration. And we can close that off. And we're going to use another curly close bracket to close off our entire, that's it for our, our for loop. Then we just need to um, give it a few more instructions. So I'm going to say after each iteration of this for loop, we want the final string um, to be added to the new string. And then after that's happened, we're going to clear the new string and return it to its empty state uh, for the next iteration. Okay, so we can use a curly bracket and that's closing off our entire grow string um, now. And this should be okay. Let's see if we get any errors. Okay, so we've got a green light here, which means um, that all our spelling is correct and we should be okay to move on to the next part.